Yo, what's good? And we're back. It's the one and only Nothing Beats Experience. And I'm joined today by the young gunner, the one, the only. I've been talking about him, man. I just interviewed Jay Prince. And when I mentioned his name, Jay Prince lit up like a proud father, man. This is the future of boxing right here. The one, the only, Shakur Stevenson. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just chilling. Everything good, though. Hey, man, you just came off an impressive victory this past weekend. You beat the brakes off a of homeboy. Yo, how you feeling now after this victory? So I felt good. I felt like I made a statement. I felt like um, like people who really watch boxing see like the, the skill set is on a whole different level and understand like my talent. So um, I feel good about it. Well, man, let's talk about that real quick. I know I mentioned the word future of boxing. So check this out, man. I, I'm a big advocate of Virgil Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz is my people. You know, I've been talking about him being one of the, the faces of the future of boxing. But I've been keeping up with your career for some time, man, since you were since you were in the Olympics, since you were in the amateurs, man. And, I, you know, I've always had high hopes. And it's really good to see all this coming together now. You know, I told Jay Prince that I feel you are a generational talent, man. And I know you've been told that. But there, there's a lot going on right now with the shift. Like, there's a paradigm shift in boxing now where you're starting to see the young guns come in and they're starting to take over. Where do you feel your place is within that? Uh, first, I, I'm gonna say uh, Virgil T is a hell of a fighter. I think he a, um, a hell of a fighter. I think he a real good fighter. Um, none but respect to him. But um, when they talk about like my place, are you asking me what my place? Is? I think I'm number one. Like, <laughs> I ain't gonna like sugarcoat. I ain't gonna act like it ain't what it is. But I just feel like if you really look and pay attention, if you watch. Go watch Young Floyd. Go watch Andre Wood. Go watch the Sugar Ray Leonard's. Like you see the talent, you see the the skill level, you see the stuff that they could do that that a lot of other fighters can't do. Like um, you really pay attention to everybody who just fought. If we being real, a lot of them they perform good, but like when my performance is like you just in there and you can see like the levels. Like it's no competition. Like every fight just looks so easy. Like and, and, and I I feel like if I'm being realistic, like. I just feel like I'm the I'm the number uno, like I'm the number uno of the next generation. Um, um everybody gonna have their moments right now and it's gonna look good for the for the Instagram and Twitter and shit gonna go a little viral if you get a knockout or whatever, but shit, it's all about the long run. It's about like ten years later on later on down the line where it's like, okay, you was knocking people out, but you was getting touched. Okay, now what you gonna do when when, when somebody else touching you and and, and the fight get harder and is you going to still be there 10 years later for now, sitting on top of the throne? And that's where I want to be. You know, they always say, you know, it's hit and don't get hit. You know what I'm saying? And, and you embody that, man. Uh, you, you hardly ever let your opponents touch you. We're going into 2021. 2020 was a very interesting year. You were the first fight back, you know, from the pandemic. You're pretty much one of the fights closing out the pandemic this year. Uh, what what's in store for 2021? I, I expect nothing but big things. And I have a request, but I want to know what's coming up. What do you want in 2021? I'm I'm gonna grab me two belts for sure in uh, 2021 at 130. Um, I'm gonna make myself king of 130 and, and be the top dog at 130 pounds. So um, first we gonna go for the WBO. That's the uh, winner out of Jamel Heron and um, Carl Frampton. Then after that we gonna go for the. Uh, the WBC, we're going right to the, the top dog, big dog, uh, the number uno, or uh, Burchell. So, right after he handled Oscar Valdez, we running right to Burchell. We're not going to shy away from him. We don't need a tune up fight, nothing. We're going right to Burchell. Look, after you handle those two, man, I, I got to get you in the Willemachenko, man. You know what I'm saying? I want you to handle them. I want you to take care of that business and then move your way up to 135 and start handling that business, you know? I, I, I don't think that even once I be, I'm going to get credit. Like, I think that I'm going to run through him. Like, me and him fight, I'll run through him, and then they're going to take the credit away because they're going to say somebody else did it already. So, <laughs> I don't feel like I'm going to get the credit I deserve even if I do be him. You know? So, like, even, like, when it comes down to it, like, he's going to have to win a belt or something, or, like, you feel me? Like, he's going to have to be a reason behind it because I know once I – Run through Lemachenko, it's gonna be oh well. Tiafimo did it already, and I'm like shit. Well, <laughs> like what you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey man, let, let, let's talk here for a second, man. You know, I was talking about uh, you know how you and Virgil are my favorite young fighters, and you know you you've been someone that I've been keeping my eye on for for quite some time. 
I love your progression. I see you finally coming into your to your body, man. You're really coming into that man body now. And you're starting to find yourself and, and really becoming a complete package. I spoke to Jay Prince, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And when we spoke about you, like I mentioned, you know, he beamed with excitement about your future. Uh, in reference to Jay, you know what I'm saying? Because we have a diverse audience. How did that come together? How did you connect with Jay Prince? I know that you're originally from New York, New Jersey, correct? And now you're in yeah. Houston, Texas. You're residing. You, you became a Texan, my boy. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, full fledged yeah, part times, baby. You know. Yeah, yeah. I really, um, I really like knew uh, Jay. Like I knew uh, Jay since I was like younger, cause I was around uh, um, my my co promoter Antonio Leonard. I was around him when I was like probably like seventeen. Um, I would, I would come to Houston, Texas, and I remember me and Jay had some type of uh, it was like a nice spot. It was a had like pool. It was like a little party area, but it was like a little room where it's like Jay Prince and like his people was in there. And I went in there. Jay Prince he was playing pool and stuff, and I met him. But I didn't really think too much of it right then and there. It was just like cool to be around Jay Prince in Houston. So uh, I guess next, um, I seen him a couple more times. And then I went to Andre Ward versus Kovalev. And uh, I ended up going to the house with them. And I started staying at the house with them. And it was me, Antonio, Jay. Uh, I, I forgot who else was there. But I ended up, like, being up late one night. I'm up late one night. I'm just in the kitchen chilling. And then Jay just walk in. And it's just me and Jay in there. And I, and I remember, like, we were just talking for a long time. Like, we were just talking mad long. He was just telling me, like, about, like, boxers and boxing and giving me, like, a bunch of stories. And I'm like, man, like, this seemed like a real genuine dude. And he was telling me about how, like, keeping your money and all that stuff is important. So, I don't know. I got to talking to him. I swear, right after that conversation, I'm like, man, uh... I'm signed up. Mind you, I just got back from the Olympics. Mm. So it's everybody want me. Like Floyd want me. All these people want me. And once I met with Jay, I'm like, man, like a week later, I'm calling. I'm like, man, I'm signing with Jay. I want to sign with Jay. Like somebody get Jay on the phone so I can sign with Jay. So once I got Jay on the phone and we started talking, it just was up from there. Like everything was just falling right into how I wanted it to go. And I'm glad that I signed with like Jay Prince because it ain't just it ain't just he my manager. It's not like like he just my manager. Like me and Jay got a real bond, real relationship, and like he like really like a a role model to me. Like I see him and see the stuff that he do is like a big role model. So like like it's not just it's not just boxing. Like it's bigger than boxing with that's with Jay. Cool. That's the Godfather of the South right there, man. You know what I'm saying? So shouts out to Jay Prince, but um. You know, you mentioned Andre Ward, you know, and, and he, he announced during the telecast over the weekend that he's no longer managing you. Uh, you know, he's no longer co-managing you better yet. Uh, he did say that he yeah. still plays, you know, plans to play a part in your career as a mentor. Do you do you mind touching on your variation of what happened there? Or, you know, why you decided to part ways on a professional level with you? I mean, that's more of an Andre Ward question. You got to ask Andre Ward that question. I can't really give you the details of the answers to that question. That's more of a Andre Ward kind of question. Um, everything that's that's all for Andre Ward. All good, all good. Well, let's go to the beginning, man. How did you get into boxing? How did it start? How did the passion for? Uh, at what point did you realize this is what I want to do for a living? This is what I'm going gonna do. I mean, uh, I think I was like, I started boxing when I was five, but I think that like. I was just going on with the motions until I probably was like 13 or 14. And I realized I'm like, man, like I'm actually really good at this. And I think I was like 14 years old. I fought in a, a, a 15, 16 year old tournament because of my birthday. But I had won every day and then I lost in the finals. And I was like the number two, but like the winners of the tournament was going overseas to Russia to fight in like an international tournament. So the dude that I fought and I lost to, he didn't have his passport. So they wouldn't let him like uh, go to Russia. So I went to Russia with like all the number ones as a number two. And then we got to the tournament, everybody lost. Everybody lost but me. 
Mm. When I seen like shit, everybody loves but me. I won the whole tournament. I went back home from Russia. I was the only one that went in the tournament. And then uh and then I just realized right then and there, I said, man, I got it. like if I could go to this tournament overseas with international fighters and everybody that's the number one loss, and I could go back and I'll come back with a gold medal and I said, Yeah, I got something. Like I started realizing like I need to take I was already taking boxing serious, but I was I knew I needed to, like, step my game up and actually, like, because I was just used to going to tournaments without, like, training, but just being talented and getting by. But I started knowing, knowing like, right then and there, like, okay, now it's time for me to actually train and I work people, too. So I think that's when I really realized, like, this what I wanted to do and this was going to bring me money and, and all that kind of stuff. So growing up, was there any specific fighters that you looked up to that you were like, yo, these are the guys that, that are my favorite fighters? Uh, you know, I know you've been compared a lot to Floyd. We'll touch that on that here in a second. But who were your, some of your favorite fighters growing up? I think uh, my favorite, favorite fighters, like top three growing up, like when I was a kid, I mainly used to watch uh, like Andre Ward or Floyd Mayweather or, uh, or uh, Penel Whitaker. But actually, like, when I was younger, younger, when I was, like, a kid, kid, I used to look up to, like, other, like, am amateur fighters, but that was, like, older, like, 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 I don't know if you know Erickson Lubin, but, like, back when he was hammer, like, back when he was amateur, he was, like, my favorite fighter to watch. Like, I go on YouTube, watch his fights, and and then I, uh, like, try to do some of the same things he did. I, like, him, I, like, uh, when I was a younger, younger kid, kid, this one, like, I was, like, mad, like, I was, like, like 13, probably. I used to uh, look up to Tank. Like, I, I say that on air. Like, I'll be real. <laughs> I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna shut the cut it and act like I did. I used to look up to Tank. I used to watch a lot of Tank. Uh, fights not new Tank. Like, Tank used to come out of my gym and shit. So, I used to see him fight, like, at the little tournaments we have in, uh, in North. So, yeah, we'll circle back around to that. Let's talk about this Floyd comparison, man. I know you hear it all the time on these telecasts, all these commentators. They always want to find a way to compare somebody to somebody. And it's always like, yo, man, this is the next Floyd. He's the next Floyd. He's the next Floyd, mainly because of your defense. But when I see you, I don't necessarily see Floyd. I, I see a different style of fighter. But how do you feel about those comparisons? I don't think they're meant to be taken in a way that's disrespectful. Uh, they're, they're obviously comparing you to one of the greatest. But how do you feel whenever you hear those comparisons? Nah, I, don't, I, I think it's like I still like like you said. I got my own style of fighting. Like I do my own thing. Like I feel like I am the first Shakur Stevenson, not the next Floyd. But I get it. Like I understand. Like I I really I sit there and watch my fight and be like, damn. Like I know exactly where I got that move from. Or like <laughs> like like being honest. Like I sit there and watch my fight and be like, I can see where everybody's saying certain things. Like I might end up doing the shoulder roll, catch you with a left hand. or I like little stuff and I'd be like, okay, yeah, like I, I understand. I understand it. But like I don't know. I just be feeling like I'm kinda like, I don't know. I think I'm farther ahead than a lot of people was when they was twenty three. Like like skill wise, they were looking at my skill and what I what I'm doing in the ring as far as like knowing my distance, know how to hit somebody and not and could still be right in front of somebody in the range to be hit back, but don't get hit like I think that 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 skill set is like put me ahead of like a lot of people, um, even like like some of the best fighters. So I understand the comparison, but um, I am my own fighter too. Absolutely, man. Well, look before we we steer away from boxing here in a second, I do want to ask you. You know, uh, I do see you as a fighter that eventually will move up, and you'll continue gradually moving your way up uh, weight classes. There's always that one fight with certain fighter that certain boxers have that define their career, that, that mega fight. Uh, I know you mentioned looking up to Tank. I, I, I know he's he's at 135. You're at 130 right now. You just had your first I fight. looked up to him when I was 12, though. Make yeah, sure that'd be no to A long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. I was like 12. They only like, you feel me? Hey, yo, your idols become your rivals. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. so uh, who's the mega fight for, for Shakur Stevenson down the line? Nah, who exactly who you just said? I think that, like, like they said, like when you got like two thoroughbreds, um, another thoroughbred to realize another, like, uh, recognize another thoroughbred, and I feel like, um, with Tank, like, I feel like Tank is a, a special kind of fighter. 
by myself. So um, I feel like like me and him gonna be like the mega big fight. Um, it's like it's like being real. Like it's a lot of like fights that probably like be big fights. But I just feel like like if I'm looking at like skill wise, size wise, like you really look at like Tia Fimo and like Devin, like you would tell like they getting bigger, like they they outgrowing like. I'm coming from 130 and like tank going back and forth to 130, 135. It's like more of like we gonna end up having a clash either way. As far as like when it comes to like Devin and Teal, they gonna move up to one 140 most likely. And but 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 when we talk about like another third bird, I just feel like um, that's probably who gonna be that big fight for me like that mega fight. Whereas like later on down the line, like how Errol and Terrence is type type of thing like. Um, I think we're gonna end up being like that. Yo, speaking of Earl and Terrence, you know, who who do you got in that fight if and when they fight? If they fight in the next 12 months. I'm not really gonna answer it because <laughs> I think that uh like, I'm really close with um Bud and um I got a good relationship with, with Earl, so I ain't gonna really answer that question. But I think that both of them is hell of a fighters and we talk about two thoroughbreds, them is definitely two thoroughbred fighters. That would be a great fight. So let me ask you before we, we leave boxing here for a sec. Uh, top rank is your promoter, Bob Arum. Uh, you know, do you ever feel like being part of top rank? I know you being, you know, a sensational fighter, a sensational boxer, but you know how this boxing shit is working right now. It's you have PVC, you have top rank, you have golden boy, you have matchroom, all these different promoters. Do you ever fear that? Hey man, like I'm not going to be able to land some of these big fights because of those differences. Or, or do you just trust in the skills and your management to make those fights happen for you? No, nah, I think that uh, I think a lot of big fights um, don't happen because of some of the fighters and, and stuff like that. Like, I agree with like part of it is business and all that. But like, I think that like when big fights don't happen, I think it's because of the fighter. Like you got to call names. You got to actually be willing to do whatever it takes to want to get some of these fights to happen. Uh, call these guys name out and. Do whatever you gotta do. Go sit down at a uh, promoter desk and tell them like this: is who I want to fight, and all that kind of stuff. Like, um, Wild and Fury just fought in top rank, and that's top rank Al Hammond. So, like, once you see stuff like that, you know, like, everybody trying to make money. Everybody in here trying to make money. So, the business part it'll be a lot easier if fighters actually want to fight each other. So I don't I don't think that just me being with top rank is gonna be hard to make fights happen or I hear all that other side of the street shit, but I don't believe in that shit. I hear you, man. Well, let's talk about music here for a second, man. You in the gym? Who you listening to to pump you up? Who's on your playlist? Name some of your favorite artists right now that that they that pump you up or that just that you fuck with in general. I like um Kevin Gates. I like Fredo Bain. I like um, J.D. Youngin. I like Drake, me, Dirk, Dirkio. I like um, Lil Baby. I see. I, hey, yo, I, speaking of Drake, he just he just posted about you on his Instagram, I think, two days ago, man. He gave you a shout. Yeah. Man, that was big, yeah. right there, man. Yeah. So I yeah. Love yeah. It, man. That was good to see, man. I, I really like seeing that light being shed on you, man. Uh, you know, I, I was wondering, because from my understanding, you were actually named after Tupac Shakur, correct? Yep. Did you know much about Tupac? Tupac's my favorite artist of all time. Did you, that, was it was something that you actually took time to like learn or that you heard about growing up? Do you listen to his music? Nah, I listen to Tupac. I, Tupac, my favorite artist of all time, too. <laughs> I, I, I love Tupac. Like, I'm really a big Tupac fan, so I actually listen to Tupac for sure. Bro, I'm not even going to lie to you. When I first saw your name on paper, this is before I had ever watched you. You were still in the amateurs. I saw your name and I said, Shakur. I was like, he had to be named after Tupac. And from that point forward, I, fo I followed your career. And, and, and bro, you know, super, super happy to see where it's going. I, I hope to see you fight in Texas because I know we're one of the few states that's allowing fans. Yeah. So hopefully that's next. When, when, are you, when do you see yourself getting back in the ring? Shit, if it was up to me, I'd be fighting next week. <laughs> Not like like for real, I'll probably see myself getting back in March. I gotta wait for Frampton and Heron to fight and try to get them back in the ring as soon as possible. So I gotta ask you this, man, before I let you go, man. You know, I'm a Mexican American 
I see you came out with the sombrero one time. I know you guys do that to test the fuck with us. <laughs> is it your way to get under the opponent's skater? Is it your way to pay homage to the Mexican fight fans? Because you know, you know, we show love, bro. <laughs> nah, no disrespect to the Mexican fans, but when I did it, I'm a, I'm a, real, I'm a real person. I ain't gonna say it and lie to you. I was really trying to get under the person I was fighting skin because uh, uh, it was so much bad blood and so much hate going on. Um, I thought it'd be funny to make them mad and haven't really want to hate me some more right right there on the spot. So um, when I did it, it was more to get on there, Skin. I, I see it, man. I see it. Well, man, Shakur, look, man, I know you're busy. And I, I know you got to get back in the gym. I just want to let you know that I appreciate your time. The show's nothing beats experience. And I look forward to seeing you gain more experience. It's, it's already great to see the body of work you've accumulated. Like I told Jay Prince, and I'm going to tell you the same, man. I'm actually a fan of yours. I really see you having a bright future in the sport. Said it time and time again, yourself, Virgil Ortiz, you know, you guys are the future of the sport. And I just can't wait to see what's next for you, man. So keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep shining and keep stunning on these boys, man. For real, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, Shakur. All good.